This is a demonstration of the calculations for lab 9, the molar mass of butane. So the first question asks you for the mass of butane used. You get this from the initial and the final mass of the lighters. When you release the gas underneath the cylinder and it bubbles up and collects in the cylinder, that is going to decrease the overall mass of the lighter. The difference in the two masses is the mass of butane you released. So if we had an initial mass, say, of 14.55, and we got a final mass of 14.44, then the mass of butane used would have been 0.11 grams. Now, the experimental data I'm using here is not from your experiment. This is just to illustrate, right? So it won't come up with the same values you should come out. It's just to show you how to do the math. So we're going to put this aside for a second. We're going to need this down in question five, but we're not going to need this until then. So we know that 0.11 grams of butane was used in the experiment. So the second thing we have to calculate is we have to calculate how many moles of butane were used. Well, that takes a little bit more work. So to get to that, we got to do a couple of subcalculations. First one we have to do is we have to figure out the pressure of the butane within the container. Okay, This we get from Dalton's partial pressure law. Dalton's partial pressure law says that if you have a mixture of gases, the total pressure of the gas is equal to the sum of the individual pressures. Well, as I described in the lab video, that gas that bubbles through there is not just butane. The stuff you collect is both butane and water vapor. So we've got to look at a bunch of different factors. So Dalton's partial pressure law says that the total pressure is the pressure of butane plus the vapor pressure of the water. We know the total pressure in the system. This is the atmospheric pressure. This is on the JetNet page right under the temperature data. So we know the atmospheric pressure is 761 millimeters of mercury. We know that the temperature of the system is 25 degrees Celsius in my example here. We then go back to the report page. And on the report page, there is a chart a table. And on that table, you look for 25 degrees Celsius and you see at 25 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 28.3 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so then we rearrange the equation and solve for pressure of butane. So pressure of butane is now equal to the total pressure minus the vapor pressure of water. So 761 minus 28.3. That gives us a value of 732.7 millimeters of mercury. That's the pressure of the butane inside the cylinder. Okay, so that's the pressure of our gas, the gas that we're worried about, the butane, 732.7 millimeters of mercury. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta convert the temperature data we have to Kelvin. Because remember, you cannot do gas laws unless you are in absolute temperature scale, Kelvin. So if we remember, Kelvin is 273.15 plus whatever the temperature is in Celsius. So in our case, the example I'm using, the temperature is 25.0 degrees Celsius. So 273.15 plus 25.0 gives you 298.15 Kelvin. So question two and question three are about getting parts of the ideal gas law. So question two gave us the pressure in the ideal gas law. Question three gave us the temperature in the ideal gas law. And we got the volume in the ideal gas law from the experiment because we know the experiment ran until we had 100 milliliters so we actually have a lot of data from the ideal gas law pv equals nrt we know p we know v we know t right we know r that was question two in your pre-lab determining the ideal gas constant for millimeters of mercury liter mole kelvin that's 62.36 that again straight from the pre-lab now, note, our units in R match the units that we have. We've got millimeters of mercury, we've got liters, we've got Kelvin, and we want to know moles. So all we've got to do is rearrange PV equals NRT to solve for N, the number of moles. So when you do that, it becomes N equals PV over RT. Then you plug your values in. The 732.7 millimeters of mercury for P, the 0 0.1000 liters for V, because remember, we have to translate milliliters into liters, right? The 62.36 millimeters of mercury liter per mole Kelvin for R, 
and then the 298.15 Kelvin for T. We calculate all that out, we get 3.939 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay? What we're trying to figure out at the end of this, our next question is, what is a molar mass for butane? Well, a molar mass is grams divided by moles. So here we calculated how many moles we had, and in question one we calculated how many grams we have. So question five is use the mass of the butane and use the moles of the butane, so the answer to question one and the answer to question four, and determine the molar mass of the butane. And molar mass is simply the mass of the butane divided by the moles of the butane. So we'd go back and we'd set ourselves up. Molar mass is 0.11 grams per 0 0.003939 moles of butane. So top one's question one, bottom one's question four. I'm just saying I have this many grams and this many moles. So when I divide it, that tells me how many grams per mole I have. And this one would calculate out to 27.93 grams per mole. That would be the molar mass of butane as this experimental data gives it to me. You've got to do this for all three trials. So you're going to come up with three values for five. Question five. You're going to have three values for question one, question two, question three, question four, question five. You're going to end up with three separate molar masses, trial one, trial two, trial three. Then question six is simply to get an average of those three values. So to take the three values you calculated in question five, add them together, divide by three. That's it, straight average, okay? And then question seven is take that value, right, that you determined, that experimental value you determined in question six, that average value, and determine the percent error from the known value. Now the actual value was question one in your pre-lab. What is the molar mass of butane, right? So you sit there and you calculate, well, it has this many carbons, this many hydrogens, and you calculate it out, okay? So once you calculate it out, you have that, that's again, question one, most, I think, almost everybody got right, if I remember looking at the pre-labs. So you've got that. And to do a percent error, it's 100%, times the absolute value, that's what those vertical bars mean, the absolute value of the actual value minus your experiment. So the actual value is the value from your pre-lab. The experiment average is the answer to question six, the average of those three values from question five. So actual value minus experiment average divided by actual value. The absolute value bars, the vertical bars on either side of the top part of the fraction, that means that there's no negatives in this answer. Whatever value it is, you turn it into a positive, so your percent error should always be a positive. So the fraction will give you a fractional value, give me a decimal value, point something, right? And then you multiply by 100% to get the actual percentage. And then question eight asks you, okay, if you are off, which you probably are by a bit, if you're off, what kind of errors do you think could have occurred in the experiment that I showed you, right? So think about the entire thing. Think about massing the lighter. Think about putting the lighter underwater, releasing the gas into the tube, then taking that out, shaking the water out of the lighter, drying the lighter, putting it back on the scale, and repeating the process three times. What kind of errors could have crept in into that system? Hopefully this helped you out in getting you through the calculations for lab nine.